we get into the lesson this week, we need your help. Hi, I'm your Extreme Kids host, Jeffrey. We are looking for 10 people right now to serve on our Extreme Kids studio team in productions, scripts, editors, and as hosts. Remember, you can serve at any age from anywhere. So say yes! Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. I got it. Okay. <clears throat> Gratitude. No. Gratitude. 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 What are you doing, John? Gratitude. Why are you doing that? Do you accept it? Do I accept what? My deepest gratitude. Wait, I think I can go deeper. Gratitude. Welcome to 
to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon, that's John, and we are excited and thankful for today's show. That's right. Brandon and I just celebrated a little holiday where there was a ton of food to be thankful for. And there were some relatives of ours who are really good at cooking that food mm -hmm. to be thankful for. But now there's a large supply of leftover food on hand, so it's time to play a little game we like to call Name That Leftover Great Ant Edition. <laughs> As you can see, there are three leftover dishes of deliciousness before us. Each one of these is made by one of our great ants. Mm. Our job is to use three of our senses, touch, taste, and smell, to try and figure out what we're eating and who made it. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to play? Yeah, I'm starving, so yes. All right. It smells kind of oniony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Kind of gooey. Ooh, kind of runny. Mm-hmm. Squishy. All right, you ready to try it? No time like the present. Mm, bon appetit. Right. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. I know what this is. And I know who made it. Yep. It's Aunt, Aunt Margaret's, Margaret's green, green bean casserole. casserole. Mm. <laughs> I knew yes! It. Yes! This is a holiday classic. And a potluck staple. Mm. You, know, you know what I appreciate about Aunt Margaret? What's that? Even though she's your aunt and not mine, she still drops a dish of this by every year for me. Oh, and she also, you know what? She deep fries these onions on top herself. Yeah, which is the only way to eat an onion. And for that we say, thank, thank you, you Aunt, aunt Margaret. Margaret. Next dish. This one already has a distinct smell. Yeah, it's definitely meaty. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, that was not what I was expecting. It, it, it feels a little bready. Yeah. What's that on top? Is that icing? What is this, a meat cake? Uh, only one way to find out. Yeah. Down the hatch. We were close with meat cake. <laughs> yeah. Isn't this your Aunt, Aunt Linda's, Linda's meatloaf? meatloaf? Oh! Yep. <laughs> Um, now, to be fair, everyone loves her meatloaf. It's just not my favorite. Or mine. And, and she knows we're not big fans, but she continues to bring it. Yeah. And, and she even tries different ways of cooking it, you know, to, to see if we might change our minds. Yeah, do you remember the habanero version? Oh. oh. <laughs> but the fact that she keeps trying makes us say, thank, thank you, Aunt Linda. <clears throat> okay, last one. Mm, that's not going down. Oh, my. Yeah. Are you getting anything from this? I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, it's cold. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay, well, let's let's find out. All right. Ew, Ooh. squishy. Yeah, it's kind of wiggly like like jello. I think there's more to it than that. Uh-huh. Shall we? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. What is in my mouth? What? This is delicious. Oh, I know what this is. Mm. And so do you. Oh, this is Aunt Riri's Ri lime congealed salad. salad. Oh, yeah. Um, this is my Aunt Riri's signature dish. Mm -hmm. A lime congealed salad. I'm not sure why it's called a salad. Oh. It's made with jello, pineapple, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, really? Uh, walnuts. Oh, and I almost forgot mayonnaise. And even though those ingredients should never go together, she believes they should. So for that unwavering conviction, we say, thank, thank you, Aunt Riri. Riri. I do not like mayonnaise. Not my favorite either. It doesn't seem to bother you much. Nope. All right, it's Bible story time! Hey guys, I gotta say, you two have already been riding that gratitude train today. We, we have? have? I thought we were just eating leftovers. You have, but you've also been extremely grateful to your aunts. You let them and everyone know how much they mean to you and how thankful you are for what they made you. And I bet you can't eat any of that food without thinking of them. Of course not. Remembering to be grateful is exactly what today's Bible story is all about. And I'm gonna tell it with the help of Laundry Theater. Today's story comes from two books in the Bible. One is Exodus, and one is 1 Corinthians, which is a letter Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. But let's start in Exodus. 
Exodus tells the story of the people of Israel who were enslaved in Egypt and served the Egyptian king, Pharaoh. But God didn't leave them that way. He sent Moses to demand their release from Pharaoh. But Pharaoh didn't listen, not at first. So God turned Egypt's water into blood and sent plagues of frogs, insects, and disease. Nothing God did changed Pharaoh's mind. So God sent the most terrible plague of all. The oldest son of every family in Egypt would die. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Every family would sacrifice a lamb and put some of its blood over the doorframe. So when death came, it passed over the household, leaving the son alive. Finally, Pharaoh allowed the Israelites to leave. They were free. God told them to remember that day and how they were protected from death and delivered from slavery. So every year, the Israelites would celebrate that event with a feast. You may have heard of it. It's called the Passover feast. In Jesus' time, God's people had been celebrating Passover for hundreds of years. The night before Jesus died, he gathered with his friends, his disciples, to celebrate Passover with all of its traditions. They met together in an upper room to enjoy this very special meal. The Apostle Paul describes this particular Passover meal in his letter to the Corinthians. Jesus took some bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. Then he said, this is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The disciples weren't sure what was going on. They didn't understand what Jesus was about to do. They had all grown up celebrating this meal to remember and to thank God for rescuing their ancestors from slavery. Now, Jesus was giving them something new to remember. Jesus would go on to give up his life on the cross to pay for all of the sins we have done and will ever do. So this meal would be more than just a thank you to God for rescuing the Israelites from Egypt. It would be a thank you for rescuing the whole world. And this tradition of showing gratitude is still celebrated today. Maybe your family or church call it communion. Or the Lord's Supper. Or the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. But whatever you call it, this demonstration of appreciation is a wonderful way to say thank you to Jesus for what he did for all of us. And by the way, gratitude is something you have to work on. You have to create a habit of showing gratitude because if you don't, there's a good chance you'll forget. That's why you guys playing the game and telling your aunts thank you for making your food is amazing. You're creating a habit. Huh. I, I thought we were just playing a goofy game, but you're right. We really do appreciate them and everything they do for us. Mm -hmm. Which is probably why they keep doing it. People love to be appreciated, and sometimes we forget that. Hey, well, thanks for reminding us. Hey, that's what I'm here for. See you next time. You know, I knew we planned that game for a reason. Yep, you said you were hungry. Yeah. Mm. Reveal the question. Ooh. What are some good habits you have? Uh, brushing my teeth, flossing, you gotta floss. Yeah, I try to exercise a few times a week, mm -hmm. even when I don't really feel like it. Oh, 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 when I say the blessing at dinner, I always try to make it a habit to thank God for the food. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. What about you? What are some good habits you have? Talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Are you flossing right now? I uh, got to floss. Yeah. You, you, you do it differently than I do. Yeah, this is exactly how you floss. All right, John is going to do the floss while he flosses. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. Make this a habit uh -huh. every day. Every day. All right. All right, now these are the dishes our uncles made. Okay, great. Right, here we go. I think I smell a barbecue. It's pasta. Oh, you think? Are you touching it? Oh, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, oh, I'm jumping oh. ahead. Oh, yeah, that is pasta. I know what this is. It's mac and cheese. Is it? Yeah. I smell a spice, some kind of herb. I smell gluten. All right, let's touch. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. Okay, wait, wait. Ah! Uh. <laughs> That's not jello. Oh, maybe it's cranberry maybe sauce. Yeah, I, I was, that's what I was thinking. Good call. Cranberry sauce. Hmm. Oh, I know what that is. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I got the olfactory senses of a badger. Mm. That's not watermelon. No? Oh. Yeah, it is. Mine tastes just like watermelon. It tastes like an aloe plant. Interesting. All right. Are you eating Wow. Wow, hard. Oh, is this celery? It's watermelon. Did you get the same thing I did? Yeah. Ugh. Ooh, I don't like it, the feeling of this. Did you try it yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's potato salad. Oh, it's it's Uncle, let's say it together. Uncle Bradford. Uncle Bradford. <laughs> Uncle Bradford. Yeah. Yep, Uncle Ben uh, Potato, potato salad. salad, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know who this is. That's right. Uncle Carolove's mashed potatoes. potatoes. Uncle Carolove's mashed potatoes. <laughs>